added my original size. Again, it wasn't the biggest bet in the world, but it was it was good enough. Every time we had one of these massive drawdowns, so crypto winter. And let's assume again that Raoul's a total moron. He misses the low by 30% because to market timing, this stuff is hard as hell. If I'd have just done that in the two cycles, 2013 and uh, 2018, I would have done 25 times better because you're compounding. And that really struck me. I'm like, okay, now I understand. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. In today's video, Raoul explains the best time to sell your crypto and how can you prepare for the next new era and what asset you should own and more. So without wasting any time, let's dive into the video. How did I do? I felt great because I bought it low, sold it into a big rally in one cycle, then bought it, I'd, I'd ridden one cycle all the way up and down, rode the other one up, sold out, then rebought into maximum pain, the down 50% day. Um, and you know, and then the breakout of 10,000 above that, I thought yeah, I've done pretty well with this. I then went back and looked at what happens if I just kept my original bet, which was much smaller. I would have made five times as much money by not doing anything. That kind of upset me a little bit because I thought, yeah, I was a macro guy. I traded it well. No. The issue being is this asset is, is in a logarithmic uptrend based on a network adoption model, Metcalfe's law. And so all of the highs are higher and all of the lows are higher. And when you put it on a on a um, normal scaling, you know, it keeps looking like a bubble and then this. And when you look back on the chart, these little blips versus this because it's this gigantic trend. So what you start to realize is the drawdowns are a feature and a benefit if you think about them right. So this time around, oh, I then calculated, okay, what happens if I just added my original size again it wasn't the biggest bet in the world but it was it was good enough every time we had one of these massive drawdowns so crypto winter and let's assume again that Raoul's a total moron he misses the low by 30 percent because to market timing this stuff is hard as hell if i'd have just done that in the two cycles 2013 and uh, 2018 i would have done 25 times better because you're compounding. And that really struck me. I'm like, okay, now I understand. So this cycle, the 2022 downside, I didn't do anything except buy when I thought we were close to the bottom. And I started buying in June and I got the ETH low in June. And then I bought more and I bought some Solana in June actually, which was too early. And then I bought again in October, November and it worked out beautifully. And I, that was based around my liquidity cycle um, and where we are in this whole um, macro crypto summer stuff, and we were just finishing winter. So, um, and then I found I'd gone to my all time highs in PL way before the market had even got close to all time highs. Now, it, it helped that I managed to nail Solana, but even then, by compounding and adding to trades into those, you do really well. Anthony Scaramucci, Skybridge Capital founder and former ally of ex President Donald Trump predicted that more pension funds will soon include Bitcoin in their investment portfolios. In an interview with CNBC, Scaramucci suggested that the state of Wisconsin's decision to invest in Bitcoin for retirement benefits could lead to other pension funds following suit. According to new U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC filings, the state of Wisconsin Investment Board has invested approximately $163 million in BlackRock's shares Bitcoin Trust and Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust. Scaramucci believes that institutional adoption of Bitcoin is currently underway and that the recent regulatory approval for Bitcoin has removed a significant barrier for large-scale institutions. Bitcoin now has the regulatory approval, and I think that was the rate-limiting step for a lot of these large-scale institutions. A lot of smart institutions are saying, let me get long this thing, before it becomes part of a total tactical allocation index, he said. 
Scaramucci also emphasized that Bitcoin is still in the early stages of adoption. Sometimes when you're early, you get a lot of bumps and scrapes. But I think it pays to be early in Bitcoin, and I think we're still early in Bitcoin, he said. Scaramucci's recent prediction aligns with his previous bullish stance on Bitcoin. Just a few days ago, on Benzinga's pre-market prep Monday, he forecasted that Bitcoin would eventually hit $150,000, attributing this to the increasing global adoption of the cryptocurrency. He also noted that Bitcoin makes up over 30% of Skybridge's assets and that he is more bullish on Bitcoin at $60,000 than he was when it was at $30,000 last year due to the recent ETF adoptions from BlackRock Incorporated and other large financial firms. You only have 4.8% of the globe in Bitcoin, Scaramucci said on Monday. That's akin to Web 1 in 1999, and I would just tell you to look at the Web 1 volatility of stocks like Amazon, eBay, etc. back in 1999. As things are adapting in scale, and I predict Bitcoin will scale, you will see the situation where Bitcoin has a billion users. The value of that network will be exponentially larger and Bitcoin will be at $150,000. So for those of you who don't need the money now, then I would take that cycle, the down cycle with utter joy and add, expect to see an 80% drawdown. Maybe it's less this time. Maybe it's more. Solana was down 97% this time. ETH was last time down 97%. And embrace it because every time you buy those lows, you're going to 10, 20, 50x, depending on what you're buying. Just, just some major coins. Right, so it is a huge wealth generator. If you imagine Solana last year was a 10x in the first in crypto spring. We haven't got to summer or fall yet. We're just transitioning to summer now. So if you've got a long-term time horizon, you will definitely make more money by following that route. Buy the sell-off. Embrace it. Have cash ready for it. Right now, we're probably in the last opportunity to put cash into the market. Um... So if you've got cash or you're waiting, now is the last chance because after this, we hit the banana zone and everything goes a bit crazy. Um, and then it becomes unbuyable and your entry levels, you know, if we do have a bear market, then you're below water. We should, you should not be from these levels. So, or not by much anyway, these are good final levels to jam in as much as you can. Okay. So if you're the long-term person, wait for, for 2026 and go, yeah, I can't believe I can get more and compound more wealth. Get some cash ready for that and be ready. When everybody's panicking, you be the person to stand up and say, ha, I've got money. Because don't forget, nobody has money when you bloody need to. It was hard to, for me to find money because cash flows have gone down because the economy's slow, all the other things that you have to deal with. But anyway, okay, that's one route. The other route, a bunch of you say, well, I want to take everything off the table. I don't want to deal with the stress of the down markets. That's fine too, right? We all need to understand our own uh, psychology and our behavior patterns. I can't help with timing the top. I know that it should be, by my work, sometime in summer to um, winter of 2025. But when? Well, my liquidity stuff says, well, liquidity should peak in July of 2025. Is that going to be definitely right? I don't know, but directionally it's going to be roughly right because it'll look like most other cycles. Generally, the cycles have peaked at the end of the year, but could that change? Remember, the last cycle was a weird one because we, we had this huge run-up, we had a peak, we had a huge sell-off, then we had another peak, didn't make much progress, and then, then it collapsed after that um, at the end of the year. Bitcoin's price performances for the past 10 years or so have been dominated by bear and bull cycles. In general, the BTC halving is regarded as the catalyst for the start of the bull market, while the last two years ahead of each such event are dictated by the bears. However, this hasn't been the case during the ongoing run, which started in the middle of 2023 and was fueled initially by hype surrounding the potential approval of spot Bitcoin ETF in the States. Once those products became a reality in early 2024, the asset broke its 2021 all-time high and charted a new one of almost $74,000. This was the first time a new peak was registered ahead of a halving. The reasoning behind this is that once those products saw the light of day, this meant that BTC is now a legitimate investment asset, 
since the companies that launch them are some of the largest in the world, including BlackRock and Fidelity. The inflows skyrocketed in the first few months, and even though the demand has somewhat flattened in the past several weeks, BTC's price went on a massive run and still stands in a range between $60,000 and $70,000. Additionally, the U.S. Federal Reserve is rumored to start lowering the interest rates later this year, which is typically regarded as a bullish development for riskier assets like BTC and other cryptocurrencies. Last but not least, the halving indeed took place a month ago. While most experts claim that the effects of each block reward slashing are diminishing in time, the fact of the matter is that the production of new BTC is declining and is now down to around 450 BTC per day, a lot less than the average accumulation rate by ETF, whales, and retail investors. And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Zella. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing!